Okay, so you're coming over a hill. And then you can see smoke in the distance. Pasa, pasa and as you kind of come over the crest of the hill, you can see well, there are several wagons, uh, and some of them are on fire, well, and there's like smoke yeah. coming out of them. And you can see ravenous monsters tearing into one of the wagons. It tears this like man down out of the seat and rips him to pieces. And there are other monsters descending upon women and children who are like running away and screaming, and more monsters and screaming and carnage, and it's horrific. Women and children running here and there and everywhere. What do you guys do? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I asked the, uh, the shopkeeper if he has faster wagons available. Wait, wait, women and children? I offer them some... Let's see. What, what, I, I asked them what's wrong. What, what, why are you running? Let's go. I, oh, I, 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 I talk to the settlers and I, I ask them where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I... I, I cast fireball on the wagon. No, 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 the shopkeeper. Everyone make a death saving throw. Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a dungeon master since high school. On this channel, I give practical dungeon master advice that you can implement at your game table. Okay, every dungeon master that has ever lived has been there. You have a player who's not paying attention, who's distracted, and it almost always involves electronics of some sort. Whether they're scrolling Instagram on their phone, checking Facebook on their tablet, or doing their taxes on their laptop, it causes the same general issue. Gameplay can easily come to a screeching halt as you have to explain over and over again what is going on. And besides that, let's be honest. As a dungeon master who puts a lot of work into creating and running a game session, it's disrespectful and even borderline offensive to me when a player has their head buried in their phone. And not just to me, but to the entire group because it can affect everyone. The question then that all dungeon masters everywhere have is, in this age of digital connectivity, what can I do about a player who won't get their head off their stupid phone? So yeah, we're gonna talk about this today, and the first solution has nothing to do with players. It's about you, fellow dungeon masters. But first, I wanted to tease you with a little bit of something. So I've been kicking around this idea of doing a Kickstarter, and what I have in my mind is creating an adventure module of sorts. See, I've been creating my own homebrew games for years now, publishing some of the adventures over on DriveThruRPG, and what with being a professional writer, as in that's what I do for my day job, it seems like a pretty neat fit for me. What I'm planning to do is have the adventure be for PCs levels one to eight or so, with maybe some stretch goals for adding onto the adventure to take groups to higher levels. Now, what I want to do is create a module around a theme or group of creatures that hasn't been represented in official Wizards of the Coast modules. So, if you all have ideas for what that could look like, or ideas in general for the Kickstarter, please let me know. Okay, back to dealing with electronics at the game table. The first thing you should ask yourself is, how big of a deal is it? I mean, if a dude is on his cell phone for like five minutes once during a four-hour game session, that's hardly a problem. In fact, I'd say that you've pretty much won D&D as a dungeon master if that's all your players look at their phones. You see, I've got lots of other valuable things I can be doing with my time as a dungeon master besides cracking down on a cell phone use if it isn't really a problem. But if it is a problem and it's reoccurring and impacting the game, then I have a few steps for you. Step one for dungeon masters who struggle with this is to ask yourself this question. To what extent, dungeon master, do you contribute to this problem? And here's what I mean. When I see players on their phones, and trust me, I am not immune to this, I, I still put my pants on one leg at a time just like everybody else. I first ask myself, am I, Luke Hart, at fault for this? For instance, am I running a fun and interesting game session that players would want to pay attention to? Or am I pantsing it with lackluster results? Am I allowing one player to steal the spotlight and dominate the table for an extended period of time? Or did I just do something incredibly stupid, like intentionally make the party split up and then provide nothing for half of the players to do for half of the game session? I was actually a player once in a game where the dungeon master pretty much forced the group to split up. Half of the party went into a city, and me and another dude were outside the city. Well, the folks in the city were having a grand old time role-playing and all that good stuff, 
but the two of us outside had jack diddly squat to do. So do you know what I did? I pulled out the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide and spent the next half hour plus just reading it right there at the table in full view of the Dungeon Master. That was my kind of overt announcement to him of, hello, I am a player with nothing to do in your game. Consequently, I'm just going to read a book until the game picks back up for me. You see, I think many Dungeon Masters can easily fall into the trap of assuming that players being on their phones is 100% the fault of those players. Oh, look at those horrible, bad, no good players on their phones again. They are so disrespectful. They don't know how much work I put into this game. What is their problem anyway? Whereas, if you get into the player's mind, this is the internal dialogue. Holy crap. This game session is stinking boring. There is nothing at all for me to do but just sit here. And just sitting here sucks. I guess, I guess I'll just catch up on my Instagram scrolling since I'm not doing anything anyway. When we notice players checking out and on their phones, our first step, fellow dungeon masters, should be self-analysis. Am I running an awesome game? Am I involving all my players? Or am I the possible cause of the phones coming out? What can I do to grab everyone's interest better? How can I improve the game? Let us not be so hasty to point the finger at our players. Sometimes it is we dungeon masters who are at fault. And to be honest, phones coming out and players not paying attention is a great indication to a dungeon master that something might be up and that we should probably figure out what that is. There are lots of reasons players might be on their phones. The player is losing interest in the game. The player is dealing with personal stuff and needs to be texting and so on and so on. And that brings us to the second way to deal with this. Have a conversation with your players. I have, on at least a couple occasions, just brought it up to the entire gaming group at a session. Hey guys, I've noticed lots of cell phones out for extended periods of time. What's up? Are you guys losing interest in the game? And then that does two important things. First, it sparks awareness. How do your players even know that being on their phone constantly gets your goat? How do they know that it's frowned upon and that it causes problems at the table? They'll only know about it if you Talk to them about it. And then when you talk to them about it, make sure you explain why it causes an issue at the table. The why is important and it can't just be because it's a pet peeve or something lame like that. Make sure that you have good reasons, otherwise they will and probably should ignore you. Second, during this conversation, ask them why the phones are out so much. Try to understand their side of the situation. This helps you figure out what's going on, why they're on their phones so much, and if there's anything that you as a dungeon master can do to help. Hey, yo, DM, your game is boring. All you ever do is combat, and that gets old after a while. You see, that's great information. I can work on putting more social interaction and exploration in the game. Yo DM, I think my girlfriend is running around on me and I'm trying to figure out who it's with. That's great information. It's actually with me she's running around. Now, can we get back to D&D? See, once that stuff is all out there, you can have an adult conversation about it and talk about, as a group, what the solution might look like. Also, I found that by just commenting on seeing lots of phones and distracted players, my players tend to lay off on that behavior some. Now, your next step, if you still have a player with their head buried in their phone, there's usually at least one, right? Is to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about it, if you really need to. See, I am a big believer in choosing my battles. One person doesn't have enough energy to fight every title offense in the world. You need to ask yourself how big of an impact the phone is having on the game. Is the player still paying attention, even while scrolling through Instagram? Or is he lost and you constantly need to repeat things? See, if his phone use is causing the game to bog down because you have to recap stuff because he's not paying attention at all, then it's a different story altogether. Go get your hammer or your ax and get ready to bring it down on him. At that point, it's time to ratchet up the pressure. Have that conversation and explain that their behavior is negatively affecting the game and you'd like for it to change. It'll probably be a tough conversation, but it needs to be had. And if you don't have the rocks to talk it out, then you'll just have to deal with the ongoing issue. At that point, it's on you for not taking care of business. The final step is your last resort. If the player won't relent and it's causing a massively huge issue at your game table, then it's probably time to ask the player to leave the game. Now, 
It's hard for me to imagine phones being that big of an issue, but it's possible some extreme cases may drive you to this. Now, I've heard of some groups banning electronics outright at the table, but in my opinion, that's pretty unreasonable for me. I mean, I myself as the dungeon master use an iPad for my notes and my phone as a spell book. And a couple of my players have D&D Beyond up on their tablets or laptops. The fact is that electronics can also improve the game experience quite a bit. So I'll probably never be one to ban them. However, if you have a serious addiction on your hands, it might be something worth considering. Let me know down in the comments how you handle players on their phones. Next week, we'll be talking about a new homebrew initiative system my groups have been using to good effect. But until then, click right here to binge on my Dungeon Mastering 101 playlist. And until next time, let's play D&D.